Welcome back to Market on Close. I'm Marley Caden. Autonomous trucking company Bot Auto announced today it achieved the first humanless hub-to-hub validation run in Houston within two years of the company being found. Now, the truck operated with no one in the cab or remote assistance and navigated real-world traffic conditions. With more on this achievement and the future of autonomous driving, let's send it over to Sam Vadis in New York. Thanks so much for that, Marley, and I'm very pleased to welcome in Dr. Xiaodi Ho, who is the founder and CEO of Bot Auto. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. So quite a milestone. Congratulations on that. Just very quickly, Xiaodi, explain how we got here. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. So uh, in order to build an autonomous driving trucks, especially for level four, uh, we first need to build the functionalities where the truck needs to learn how to navigate in complex scenarios. And uh, that's our first year project. We deliver the first year hub to hub demo. And in the second year, we significantly boost the safety and reliability of the system. So everything thinking about the uh, adversarial weather or if there's any uh, hardware glitch, we will always have a backup plan to drive safely. So only when we have built the entire safety net, now we're launching it on the public road without a driver in it. Fascinating stuff. Why trucks rather than cars? Well, first of all, I think there is a huge, huge uh, truck driver shortage. That's a big problem in the U.S. And we all know that the country is running on trucks. So we believe there is a great opportunity for this, not only to apply the technology uh, as, a, you know, as a very, very cool stuff, but very importantly, it is, <coughs> excuse me, it is a, uh, a necessity, especially uh, when we're getting in the future more demands in, uh, in e-commerce, in, in food transportation. But the, the real challenge is that we don't have enough drivers. We need to solve this problem. You know, we're just looking at these pictures here uh, of the trucks. And this might be a bit of a silly question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Why does it look like some sort of invisible person is driving the truck? I mean, why not make it so that it's actually just without a seat and a steering wheel, just kind of like, I don't know, a box or something. Why, why is it designed like this, where it looks like somebody can actually sit in the truck? Is, is it for the dual purpose of that? Oh, well, I think there are two pieces of videos. And one piece of video I recognized was like a year ago, and we have still have the first hub to hub demo with a human safety driver in it. And the second piece of the video is actually what we have launched recently without a driver. And the, the purpose for this is that uh, for all of the engineering work is, you know, you, you better reuse something that is already invented before. So, for example, some of the satellites are using the x86 chips. They don't really reinvent the CPU. For the same purpose, we use the same truck, but we add on a little bit of uh, redundancy, not a little bit, a lot of redundancy functionalities onto it so that the truck can drive by itself. It's actually is much easier than just building the truck from the scratch by ourselves because most of the components are actually shared with human and without. By the way, this is our last year video, not our this now. This is our recent video that we launched from uh, from the like 7:35 p.m. to 9 p.m. in Houston. Okay, and obviously one of the big players in the autonomous driving space, uh, which has caught a lot of attention because of just the nature of how high profile it is, is Tesla, obviously. But we've been watching the sort of road bumps that uh, Elon Musk has been facing in trying to get this technology up and running. I'm just wondering with what you've got here, how you're nav navigating some of the safety and regulatory environment. Okay, I think, uh, first of all, I would... Uh... Uh, give kudos to Tesla for advancing the regulatory uh, boundaries, advancing the regulatory movement for enabling autonomous driving. Um, I think they've done a lot of lot of job, and right now we see federal level regulations for autonomous driving is about to uh, is having a, a kind of public opinion version that is now public, which we can expect in the next uh, maybe one or two years. Federal level regulations of autonomy will be will be applied, and that's one. And uh, for specifically for autonomous driving trucks, we build a system on one hand in a way that is similar to Tesla that has a, a so-called foundation model, a neural network that does a lot of this computing by taking the camera data. But in addition to what Tesla has, a camera-only solution, we do have LiDARs, which gives another layer of safety for driving on a highway. Okay. And, you know, who do you consider right now as far as the competition is concerned as a rival? I mean, I'm just wondering uh, where Bot Auto really sits in the, the grand scheme of things. Is anybody else sort of doing what you're doing right now? 
Uh, I would say that there are other players in it. Uh, there are Aurora, Kodiak, uh, Wabi, there are Pork. There are the other players in it, but I don't really see anyone as a competitor because the market is huge. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have about a ten. 100,000 truck driver shortage as of today. And even with a very optimistic estimate, uh, by 2030, I don't think the combined uh, uh, capacity provided by the totality of all of these autonomous driving trucking companies will not e even close to fill that gap. And also thinking about this, we are building the technology. Actually, to me, I only see the mountaintop. I don't really see other mountaineers competing against each other. We all going to the top of the mountain where we all have our Everest in our hearts. Right. I mean, competition is healthy um, and so is innovation. I'm just wondering, you know, what's next then for your company, Bot Auto? I mean, have you secured any deals as far as, um, you know, perhaps um, contracts with respect to logistics companies who are looking to tap some of your technology? Yes, of course. Uh, we actually have started to haul freight since last December. So it's actually been a while and we've been learning a lot from our partners and our customers on how to build a better product to serve them and to better like plug this great technology into the logistics industry. And uh, I think the next step for autonomous driving, especially for trucking, will be to reduce the cost, operating cost per mile. Right now we have a mixed fleet. Some of the runs are driver in and some of them are driver out and we're going to continue doing that. And the key thing here is that how can you make sure that your autonomous driving total cost, because autonomous driving is very hard to manage and it is a complex system after all, and we have to guarantee safety, how to make sure that the overall operation cost for autonomy system is getting lower and lower so it has more economic value for the customers. Okay, well, Shaldi, congratulations once again on your milestone. It's a fascinating story. We will continue to follow it as well. Dr. Xiaodi Ho, who is the founder and CEO of Bot Auto, joining us there.